Hey everyone, Dave here from the Saturday Morning Cartoons Podcast with your weekly pre-show announcements. Today's quick pre-show announcements are, in order, some shout-outs, a Patreon request, and what is happening on today's episode. So first up, our shout-outs on episode 85, Cat Dog. Soggy Waffles XP says, TBH, this show was underrated. Changed my mind. I can't, because we recorded that episode back in 2016, and I can't even remember if I ate breakfast this morning. On episode... 244, Invader Zim Enter the Florpus, our review and interview with Joan and Vasquez. Nightmare Invader Dragons and Squids Reborn says, love that name by the way. Invader Zim Enter the Florpus was an awesome movie. Jonan did an amazing job, and Mr. Vasquez is a really unique in his own way. We couldn't agree more. This review and interview is still the most visited episode of the podcast, with well over 30,000 downloads all by itself. You guys are awesome. On episode 109, Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Now give me a second here. Yes, they made an animated series about Ace Ventura Pet Detective. And yes, it crossed over with the Mask cartoon. And no, neither one of them starred Jim Carrey. But also back to yes, we absolutely dipped Ace Ventura the animated series. And it's actually the origin of the dip idea. So anyway, just to let you know, that's some background trivia for you. On this episode, Wicket Warwick says... I just read that Jim Carrey will reprise his role in Ace Ventura 3, and that site confirmed those news are true. Those news was posted three days ago, and there is also a rumor that Jim Carrey is going to reprise his role in The Mask 2. So, here's how rumors on the internet work. Someone brings up an idea of a reboot or a continuation, and then a blog turns that into quote-unquote news. Then, someone gets a one-word comment from an actor or creator saying they're interested or they'd be curious, and then a blog turns that into quote-unquote news. Rinse and repeat throughout the entire news cycle. So if and when we actually hear some more concrete news about more Ace Ventura or more mask projects and whether or not Jim Carrey's involved with any of them, we'll let you know on Collider. That's it for our shoutouts today, but we do have a quick ask for you. We have a Patreon. You guys probably know this by now, but if you're still looking for a holiday present to send to us, this will be a great one. You can support this show and our original content just by doing that. We like this show, you guys like this show, but we also like ad-free stuff, so consider being a patron, like Jake Grimshaw, John Helter, Melanie Harker, and Jamal Newman, as well as both Sean and myself. You can send us as little as $1 a month, or as many Bezos bucks as you can spare. We're happy either way. If you don't want to support, that's cool, this message isn't for you, but you can still unwrap this free show and enjoy. If you do want to support us, awesome. We really do appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Click the link in the bio for any of our social media, or search Saturday Morning Cartoons on Patreon, and remember, that's morning with a U. So what is on today's episode? Well, we're continuing our LEGO Star Wars series review, now that they're all on Disney+. Plus. You can catch last week's episode, LEGO Star Wars The Yoda Chronicles, which we reference quite a bit in this week's Hour 4, LEGO Star Wars Droid Tales. This five-part miniseries aired on Disney XD in 2015, features a comedic take on the events and characters of Star Wars as told from a droid's perspective by C-3PO. It's definitely in the Legends category, so we try not to take it too seriously. At least I try not to. I don't know what Sean was doing. So anyway, on with the show. Hello and welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the Collider Weekly Podcast for all things animation, including news, reviews, and interviews coming to you all the way from the cargo hold inside the Millennium Falcon, along with a bunch of Blu-ray copies of yet another Star Wars remake. I'll be your co-host, Sean Paul Ellis, and joining me from the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, he's that scruffy-looking nerf herder. Welcome my co-host, Dave Trumbord. David, 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 how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, bud. How are you? Uh, I gotta, I gotta, uh, now that we got those pleasantries out of the way, I got a proposition for you. Oh, what's the proposition? How many Blu-ray copies is it worth to you for one nerf? For one nerf? I got one nerf. Not a uh, great herd, but you got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But I could use some of them Blu-ray copies, if you know what I mean. I mean, I've got enough of them. I'm just willing to give them away to uh, you to, for free. So not a trade? So I can keep my one nerf? You get to keep your one nerf. Nice. You want some nerf milk? Nerf milk? Is it the blue milk? You can milk a nerf. I don't know. Okay. If it is, I probably got to take it to the space vet. I don't know <laughs> if that's supposed to be the color of nerf milk. Who, Who does? Epic knows in this universe? Yeah. <laughs> you got green milks, you got blue milks. Could be anything. And I'm okay with all of that. I think it's all good. I'm going to order Nerf milk in my coffee next time I go to a Starbucks and just see what happens. Oh, okay. 
I will say that I'm okay with all of this because regardless of where the milk is coming from, I guarantee I can't drink it and I won't be able to process it. So. That's a good point. I wonder if uh, people in the Star Wars universe are lactose intolerant or whatever that is in their universe, midichlorine intolerant, whatever it would be. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? You know what? My one gripe about the whole Star Wars only universe, one. Yeah, okay. my one gripe well, about the this. Star Wars universe is that they really don't get into enough of like the food and the culture. They don't, and like the digestion of all the different races and everybody that's in the entire Republic uh, or Empire in general. I want to know those nitty gritty details. You think Favreau would have done that by now? You think he would have done like a chef? Of the Star Wars universe special, at least. You at joke? At least. Oh, you joke, but I would watch the heck I, out I of that. I don't even joke for that, though. I'm actually surprised that he hasn't done that. Or even just like a, a Star Wars holiday sh- chef special. He loves the holiday special so much. <laughs> Let him do a chef crossover. Yeah. I'd love I would, that. And for people who aren't aware, we are now going to be reviewing John Favreau's The Chef um, today instead yeah. of any of the cartoons that we want to talk about. Absolutely. Put or a, put the a Netflix series, The Chef. Yeah. Womp wrap on the st- on a stick. Yeah, perfect. I would eat that. <laughs> I would eat it. Uh, but instead, today we are going to be talking about Lego Star Wars: Colon Droids Tale that came out in 2015. <laughs> really the colon, getting it. The colon makes it sound much worse than it is. In my opinion. Maybe it sounds makes it sounds exactly like what it is for okay. Sean's opinion. No, I mean I think that that was probably what I was implying. Nice, because this is a interesting cartoon. But we are talking about. Again, for the second week, Lego, Star Wars, and this week we're doing Droids Tales that came out in 2015. So we're getting into some of more of these Disney Plus things uh, that they have that are available. Plus, we have Star Wars that is coming out for Rise of the Skywalker at the very end of the month, uh, December 20th. Get your tickets now. We are not sponsored by anything regarding nope. any IMDb ticketing service. But also, if you're listening, IMDb, and I know you are, give me a call. Also, Fandango, we're here, here to yeah. help. You need the help, apparently, so we're here to help your record-setting sales already. (laughs) Oh, I love that these people don't care about it at all. Well, (laughs) we are going to be talking a little bit about uh, one particular episode. It was the highest-rated episode that we had on IMDb. But Dave, I know that last week we had a very brief opportunity to talk a little bit about our experience with Star Wars. Right. And this was something that was very near and dear to my heart. I grew up watching Star Wars a lot. You had a slightly different take on this, right? Yeah, a little bit. I came to it a little bit later. Um, again, if you guys missed last week's episode, I watched the ser- the movies, the original movies, for the first time during a friend's sleepover. Uh, and at the time, Super wasn't really into it, probably because it was real late. And I was like, what are these weird things that I'm watching? But it wasn't something that I came to really appreciate and get into until years later and then like i mentioned to sean last week i get into the nerdy side of things so like just like we would appreciate a a culinary approach to star wars i get into like the engineering the the fictional engineering that went into all the stuff in the star wars universe and the card game and the video games came after that so that was my kind of uh entry into the universe if you will and i i also wanted to check because obviously you know we've talked a lot about the two specific brands being Star Wars as well as also Lego. Right. Were you a big Lego kid or a Constructs or Mega Blocks or you know anything growing up as well? You think I would have been because I just said all that like engineering yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I was leading leading to. Yeah, I don't know for whatever reason that like tactile kind of like imaginative stuff never really <laughs> like I did that with arts and craftsy kind of stuff, but not Legos for whatever reason. Huh. Like I had the I had the the connects and I had the. Um, I guess was the Kinex the one with like the the metal pieces that you could actually make like like big cranes and whatever. Is that like that you an erector like... set? Yeah, erector set. Yeah, yeah, that was the other one that I'm thinking of. So I had all that stuff. I just never did much with it. And I don't know if it's because I didn't have like supervision to like show me how to do basic things, so I could only figure out like dumb like kid level stuff and nothing beyond that. Hmm. Uh, or when the sets came out that like. Lego was like, all right, stop. Like, you you keep making your own thing, but here's a blueprint to just follow this and make the thing that's on the box. That stuff I loved because that I could just follow, like, you know, step by step and just be like, oh, okay. It's a thing that I can build and I don't have to, like, be creative at all. I could just build the thing. I had, like, one massive, like, starship, not from the Star Wars universe, just a random Lego spaceship. Uh, That was really all I had of, like, a couple little Mm. sets here and there, but I wasn't wasn't a fanatic. I'm, I'm still not to this day. But what about you? I was big into Lego. Yeah. I had I had a, a couple kits like in the eighties when when I was younger growing up and, and really enjoyed the heck out of them. I was one of those kids that had sort of like the the bucket of 
random Legos that was sort of all together. Uh, I guess maybe the inverse applied to me was that I would love to just sit around and kind of, you know, uh, build like a house or, or build like a different structure for a lot of the Lego people to play inside of. Uh, really enjoyed that aspect of Lego. There's just sort of the unlimited imagination, unlimited play was sort of what they have. It was always a good time. And I recently rewatched the Toys That Made Us special that they had about Lego. And it was, it, it jogged my memory in terms of what we watched for today because there's a line that's in here that I think applies to the Lego system that they talk about, which is sort of the the idea that all characters are the same height or all blocks can interconnect with each other. And so scale and proportion is a big thing for the Lego system. It was interesting to sort of see there was like one offhanded tag of a joke that was in here that was sort of a reference to that. And I really enjoyed that. I thought that was kind of fun. That was good because it goes to what we, sp we spoke about last week with the strength of these particular series, which there are a lot of things on, on both sides, as you might say, the good, the bad, and the LOL. But the strengths that all these series have had so far is that the branding is really, really strong. So the Lego really knows their brand and how to milk it and how to, you know, you know, for all it's worth. And Star Wars obviously knows their brand too. And they really, really work well together here. And uh, Sean has a great example of exactly how that works in, in one kind of like offhand joke that you may miss, right. but we'll, we'll bring it to your attention later on. Right. Well, before we get too much into this actual cartoon, we are going to turn this over to a longtime listener in front of the show, Bobby Anthem, who's going to give us a breakdown of what Lego Star Wars droids tales actually entails. So, Bobby, take it away. Episode 3, Mission to Mos Eisley. C-3PO is on the trail of R2-D2, who was last seen being taken to Tatooine by a mysterious captor. Did I say mysterious captor? I meant Mysterious Captor. I don't know what else to say that we haven't said in last week's episode for Yoda Chronicles. I got one. Okay, what do you, what do you want? What kind of droid do you think Bobby would be? Oof. Uh, he'd be probably like an IG model. I was thinking that or like the, uh, what, what was that big one from, um, what was it, Rogue One? And it was also recently featured in the recent um, Star Wars video game, uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Hmm. Huh. Like the, it was like one of the combat droids. I don't know why I just pictured him as like this big, just like hulking combat droid that's just like relentlessly pursuing you. Okay. No, I, I'm Is actually that good. Not... Bobby, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> Please let us know where we're going to cast you as, Bobby. Please. Well, we did talk a little bit about the fact that we are going to be discussing one particular episode of Droid Tales. And this is the highest rank episode from IMDb. It is called Mission to Mos Eisley. So we are going to get into this particular episode that came out in 2015 so it's this one's kind of weird though too we normally get like a, a premiere episode like the very first episode that people love or the finale that people have like come to appreciate the series over time and then they feel like the last episode of it's like the best this one comes smack in the middle now it's only five episodes long but right. everybody really liked this third one for whatever reason I actually have an idea of why they like this third episode. I think and so too. Yeah. Also, one of the reasons that I did not yep. enjoy this particular episode. And there it is. So. That's a nice tease for yep. the content to come. There we go. Can I give them a brief primer on on this series just to kind of like get everybody in the right headspace for it? Yeah. So this one, like the Yoda Chronicles, is it's set up with a weird kind of framing story. So in Yoda Chronicles, we had Yoga Yoga. We had Yoda <laughs> sitting on a log, talking to a Force ghost, uh, Obi Wan cooking hot dogs, and just telling stories. That was the framing story. And then all this, the main plots of the, the episodes that would uh, come out happened throughout the course of the Star Wars movies, the six that existed at that time. Same kind of idea for this one, except it's C-3PO telling just random travelers he's with just tales from the, the Star Wars saga. So these stories, again, go all the way from episode one all the way up through uh, episode six, Return of the Jedi, because if you remember correctly... The droids are the only ones that span the entire Star Wars saga, especially Anthony Daniels and C-3PO because he's voiced or acted as C-3PO, anything that's ever had a Star Wars name attached to it. So it's kind of interesting that they decide to do this kind of funny animated series from the droids perspective because they are kind of the keepers of the saga as it stands right. right now. This is a Legends series, though, we should mention. Just like last week, it's not canon. So anything that happens in this is not technically like official they can have fun what? with it. 
What? You mean, you mean but it, it's, it's happening? Texts. It's happening yeah. in the Star Wars universe, but it's Legos, but Those it's not canon. Texts. I know. Tell me about it. It blows yeah. your mind. But now nah, this is Legends. So the, the the fun thing is they can have fun with it. They can introduce a lot of characters. They can like resurrect and revive characters that may have died in earlier episodes yeah. and, and bring them in. They can drop you into various points throughout the history. But because of that framing story, they have a little bit of leeway to play with time. So. To get you kind of rooted in time, they do follow the main timeline just to keep everybody like on the same path. The framing story takes place after the Battle of Endor in Return of the Jedi. So it's after the main six movies. But the story that they tell in this particular episode takes place just before A New Hope. And then also covers most of the major moments of A New Hope as well. So we're right around the original movie and just before it with some special guests who we'll talk about in a little bit. Right. So in order to talk a little bit more about droid tales, we are going to talk about the good, the bad, and the LOL. Nope, not the spaghetti western because we've changed one small detail. It's not the good, the bad, the ugly. Don't worry about this. We're going to talk about what we liked about this, what didn't resonate for us, and then what made us laugh, whether it was intentional or unintentional before we give our final review. So tonight, Lego Star Wars droid tales. Dave, what what did you enjoy about this and which is challenging question to ask because we have a lot in terms of comparison from last week's Yoda Chronicles as well. Yeah. The first thing that comes to mind is just like droid deja vu for me because it is the right. good things that work are a lot of the same things that work for Yoda Chronicles. So we've got John Williams music. We've got an opening crawl, which Bobby just narrated for us expertly. Well, I might add, those are the kind of uh, things that you expect with a star Wars series or story in general. And we had that last week and those kind of things continue this week. So those are, those are still good. Like those are the things you expect when you have a star Wars series. Uh, right. What about you? What are some things that stood out for you? No, I mean, the the same, I think, resonated and brought me into the universe. Very similar to last week. We have a bunch of characters that pop up that are fun to kind of see. And in this case, they have a little bit of a crossover with some of the characters from Star Wars Rebels. And so yeah, which see- was super cool to see them in this one because you're used to like the canon characters, but the Rebels characters had been relatively new when this uh, this particular series came out. So it was kind of cool to see like that new addition in their own series pop over and, and join this spinoff legend series too. You know, it's crazy to think that after episode three, when order 66 was issued, all of the Jedi that were around and hadn't, you know, had gone into hiding at that point. Right. And so rebels obviously tells the story of, you know, an apprentice and a master Jedi uh, from that perspective of them kind of going rogue throughout the universe and trying to find their place with no official kind of head of the Jedi order around. And so you see some of these classic or non-classic characters, I should say, unless of course you've been watching rebels, which why wouldn't you? It's a, it's actually a pretty good show. It's a great show. So you see Ezra, you see, uh, you know, Zeb, uh, chopper. So you see a couple of these characters that are in here on a very particular mission. And I liked being able to see that that was fun. And I didn't have an expectation going into it that that would happen Right. So when it's revealed that it's those characters, it was very rewarding to see that moment for, for everything that was taking place. Yeah, and, and it, it helped to kind of like cement that timeline too, to like know almost exactly where you were in C-3PO's story. Because right. at this point, again, it's prior to New Hope. So C-3PO and R2 are on loan to uh, Senator Organa, but they're still technically working with the Empire. So that's, it adds an interesting wrinkle to the storytelling. So to get to see this like drop in on a mission with the ghost crew, like that was pretty cool. And all the characters are there and they don't they don't interact a whole lot except to kind of do their own thing. Right. Uh, because it's told through C-3PO's uh, metallic eyes. So we get to see it from his perspective. But yeah, it was a nice drop in. And that made the first half of this episode a lot stronger maybe than the second half. Ah. Uh... Uh, to be to be seen to be continued to be continued so just having an opportunity to see some of those characters i think it was always fun yeah um and then finally for me i think the the good thing was very similar to last week locations who doesn't love to see some of the locations within the star wars universe it's always fun to kind of see them in this lego setting as well to to recap and go back to some of these places we talked about obviously that Mos Eisley is in the name of this episode right. so you spend a significant amount of time in that particular location which is great to see really super enjoyed that yeah I had probably more that I liked about this uh, than you did so we already talked about kind of the branding for both which I thought was strong but I really like the idea that Anthony Daniels kind of gets to tell his own story here 
as C-3PO. So whether or not you necessarily like C-3PO as a character or have some issues with him, as I do, it's kind of cool to get to see his perspective on things and see it through his eyes and how he remembers it or how he experienced it. I also like that it's kind of told in that vignette style. So it it tries not to get too stale because they can, they can hop around and experience different stories and kind of show them through a new perspective. Whether or not that works all the time is uh, up for debate. Because sometimes it does, sometimes it really doesn't. Um, I also like something that, that Sean didn't like, which were these collectible cards that show up early on in the episode. One of the travelers is talking to C-3PO and he opens up just his like big binder full of like cards of random people and things in the Star Wars universe. That's something you can do in Legends because Legends. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like we did as kids with like Marvel or DC collectible cards or like comic book characters with their, their power rankings on the back and like an action pose on the front, that kind of stuff. I thought it was really funny, but also uh, an interesting way to get into the story of C-3PO spending time with the ghost crew. Also, I love the fact that uh, C-3PO had his own card uh, with a terrible picture and I think a one star <laughs> rating for combat, which yeah. <laughs> that was like a nice little joke that I thought was pretty good. Yeah, that's it for me, though. That's the good stuff that worked for me. No, I, I, I think for me to kind of transition into the things that I didn't like, the collectible card aspect of it, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it just it hit a nerve with sure. me personally as having been somebody who recently had to go to a, their storage unit where you where I have tons and tons of collectible cards and all of these different things from DC and Marvel myself. What am I doing with them? They're just sitting there. And I, I think the the bummer was was that they use it as a way to segue into that one early vignette with Star Wars Rebels. Right. And then they just drop it and they never use it again. And I, I would have been okay had they continued to use that as a reoccurring joke. But it was really kind of just there for a one-off and then dropped immediately. So yeah. it's a little bit of a bummer for me. Uh, not something that I, you know, loved to the fullest extent. I love that uh, Senator Organa got a card, too, for no reason, really. Because yeah. it was just a joke to be like, oh, he's here, too. Like, I got him as well. I got the whole collection. Right. Yeah. I I'll say one of the things, again, that, like, didn't hit to the fullest extent that I typically enjoy was the actual opening crawl. Yeah. There was a moment in the opening crawl when they get to the very end where it reveals that R2 had been captured by a mysterious captor. And instead of just playing it straight, for that opening crawl, they felt the need to go back and say, like, did we say mysterious captor? We meant to say mysterious captor. Yeah. And they really tried to have fun with it. Again, it was one of those things where it was like, yeah, I know the gravity of the situation. I'm I'm a 39-year-old male watching, watching <laughs> the intended a kid's demographic like, for this I, cartoon. I get it. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm sure the kids watching this were probably just like, huh, maybe they didn't hear it the first time. I, I'm understanding of the audience and who they were targeting for this. But for me watching it again, I was like, okay, cool. Just get to the fun star Wars stuff that I want to see. What's funny for me is like the more of these we watch and we've watched 257 now Jeez. series in general. Uh, the mm -hmm. more I believe that it's whatever made the creators, the voice actors, the voice directors and the writers laugh more so than like, what's going to make kids laugh. Obviously when you're in the writing room and whatever it's, it's for whatever your audience is, your target demographic, what are the stories they're interested in? What's going to make them laugh? What's going to get them to buy toys? That's fine. But I think a lot of the little jokes and stuff too are definitely for the, like the people who are just recording these lines day in and day out, the people who are writing these lines, directing them. So I think probably for the narrator, it was just kind of like a funny little voice tick of narration. Sort of like if they're doing, if they're giving you an A read and the voice director's like, now give me a B read and make it like more serious and more dramatic right. over the top. That's all that was. So to me, it didn't, it didn't bother me as much, but it was weird. It was a weird crawl because it was very short and it was very kind of silly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Dave, for you, I know that you had mentioned something that didn't work for you was we've talked a little bit about this framing story from Yoda yeah. Chronicles as well as also in Droid Tales. How did you feel that it hit for you within Droid Tales? I think we're on the same page here in that it's a little more confusing than it was in Yoda Chronicles because Yoda Chronicles, they're not telling two different stories at the same time. There's Yoda and Obi-Wan, and they're right at the beginning. And then maybe you check in with them at the commercial break, but they haven't gone anywhere. They're not doing their own adventure in their own time. So really the only story that's taking place is the one in the past that they're talking about. With this one, C-3PO of the present has got his own thing going on. He's traveling around and trying to do stuff, trying to save R2 and go on his own adventures. But he's also telling two different stories that happen at two different times in the past. So it's kind Ooh. of just like 
wait a second, especially for kids. And they don't do a great job of visually separating those three. So you could watch Yoda on his log and you knew where you were going to be. And then you, if you didn't see Yoda on his log, you knew that you were in this other timeline. With this one, it got a little muddled. Right. Yeah. It was, uh, and, and I think the muddling happens for me because within both stories, whether it's the framing or the actual main story, they're changing a lot of locations very quickly. Yeah. And if you were to come back from a commercial break, they don't really kind of have that that static setting to kind of ground you and say, hey, we are watching this right now because in many cases, C-3PO or R2-D2 were in both stories. And, and that's so, what makes it difficult, yeah, is uh, they appear throughout all the stories. So just because you see them on screen doesn't mean you know where or when in time you are. And the Star Wars timeline is insane enough to begin with. Right. So without some kind of like heads up or descriptor or change of visual style or something, it's really tough to kind of keep track, especially for kids. Yeah. Uh, I'll say another thing that wasn't difficult for kids was difficult for me as an adult uh, was, again, kind of along the lines of what we talked about last week for Yoda Chronicles. I felt like some of the story and some of the script for this was kind of a little lackluster in a sense. The bummer for this is that, you know, I felt like uh, I felt like this was a story where they were really just kind of recapping a lot of things that you already know and love and have seen before. Sort of, if you were to watch an anime series and you get to that mid-season oh, where they're God. like, let's recap everything the that you've seen. filler recap episodes, those I drive me nuts. I don't need an episode 12 or 13 to give me a recap like that. See, I'm, I'm kind of okay with it for this one sometimes because that's the approach of this show from the beginning, right? So the whole thing is just, it's only five episodes. They're going to go back and revisit some famous stories and famous characters and famous moments that you know. But it's going to be through the droid's perspective and it's going to be a little sillier because it's Lego and because legends. I'm okay <laughs> with that, but it doesn't mean it works every time. It, this episode did feel like it dragged. Uh, the first Oof. half was great, but then the second half felt like it was twice as long as it actually oh, was. So it's because they tried. They either tried to do too much or they tried to really milk all the, the comedic potential out of every little joke that they could. And again, sometimes I worked, sometimes it didn't, but it, it slowed things down a little bit and had me checking my watch. And it was right. like 22 minutes long total. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I was definitely, I was exhausted 11 <laughs> minutes in to a 22 minute episode. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's a lot to think that you would take all of a new hope and distill it down into 10 all, minutes. maybe, yeah, 10 minutes and then put this unnecessary framing story around a new hope that is slightly interesting and you're kind of curious to see it. But I think, the challenge and, and and Dave, I think we're kind of on the same page, maybe a little bit with this too. I don't know that C3PO can carry a story like this as a character. And that's why I think it's it's told through their perspective. So it's best in short bites. If they would have right. done three individual stories here, I think that would have been better. Each story be like five, six minutes long, six six, seven minutes long, whatever. That would have been better. So you do one with the rebels. You do one with like them meeting Luke for the first time. And then you do one towards the end or even after uh, New Hope takes place. Whatever. Whatever you want to do. Uh, I feel like trying to have two meteor stories. But then one of them taking the entirety of New Hope and trying to condense it into 10 minutes was, it was, it was too much. They need to take smaller bites. Yeah. yeah. And I think it was also hard too because, you know, the we, we all, you know, maybe you haven't watched Rebels. You know, and so you you didn't have that expectation. Um, maybe you've watched A New Hope and you know exactly how that story is going to go. You know, it's going to be pretty cut and dry in terms of what you see. Right. The interesting thing is sort of that framing story because you're curious what happened to R two D two, and that story was the weakest of the three. Yeah. And that's what that's what the real bummer is. Did did you actually discover or find out who was the mysterious captor? I didn't who, even care to the point that I didn't even think about it because I was just kind of like I'm just watching stories about yeah. droids being droids and like I had more fun watching, you know, R2 and Chopper battle or I had more fun watching the silly stuff that like Lego did to tweak scenes that we know and love than I cared about whatever the framing story was. Right. Did I miss it? Was there anything there? Uh, not really. I mean, I, I found out who the, who the captor was yeah. and along the lines of like what we're saying, like one, I only wanted to know just to know. I right. don't, I don't care how many personal investment in what had happened. <laughs> surprise, surprise. It was Lando Calrissian. I uh, think I missed that completely. Well, they don't tell you, they tell you in the uh, next, they tell you at the end of the next episode. In the shadow of the shadow of the Falcon or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. I okay. like, I scrubbed ahead to the uh -huh. point where I was like, show me who this, <laughs> and then 
as soon as they told me, I just went, okay, and just closed okay, my browser. Fine. I was like, I'm done. I'm finished. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Don't need to, don't need to, need to watch the rest of this. Like, yeah. you know, but I'm, I think, I think you're spot on. Like C3PO and R2D2, any of the droids that we have that are telling these stories, like I, I don't want the full meal. I want like the chicken nugget version yeah. of what they have to say and nothing more. Exactly. Just like if you're going to have fun with it, just have fun with it. And, and the other thing too, is they tried to cram way too many like locations yeah. and stuff into this thing to the point that some of them look rough. I didn't like yeah. the design of the Death Star. It looked like a bad, like, origami approximation of a Death Star or, like, a really, like, dollar store pinata. It just looked bad. It didn't look like something I'd want to buy as a Lego set, which we talked about last week was one cool thing. It's, like, everything you see in a Lego show, you should be able to pick up and buy off the shelf. And yeah. I didn't want that Death Star. <laughs> it everything in, really everything in this series should be very toyetic. Like, yeah. it should have that toy quality to it. I think the bummer is, is that, and, and I don't know if you saw this, but like when the Death Star exploded, like it just exploded. Like we've talked about crashes last week where like right. all the different blocks go all over the place. Like it lost its Lego quality in right. that moment, knowing fully and being fully aware of how strong both of these brands are. They could have easily incorporated both of them and been satisfying, but they just didn't. And I, I just lost how much I cared about new, this, this cartoon made me not like a new hope. Wow, <laughs> I, I I got so frustrated with this where I was like, I'm I think I'm OK. I think I'm OK. Well, and I don't want to steal your thunder for later on. But like if you don't if you have a Lego series, but you don't have those Lego moments like that with like the bricks yeah. falling apart and all that, but staying intact as like small individual brick units, then what's what's the point? You're just it's just a knockoff Star Wars cartoon at that point. It's not really a Lego cartoon. Um, so, yeah, I get that. Yeah. What else was there work for you in this one? I think that was it for really? what didn't work for me. I just I think it was overall confusing just in terms of the the amount of locations, the amount of story, everything else. I know you have a couple other things that didn't yeah, work for you. A, a couple minor things and then one kind of like overarching thing. So my minor one, uh, why does Chewie have alopecia in this version of the Star Wars universe? Doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense, especially when we just saw him in Yoda Chronicles where he's just like, he's all brown. Like he kind of always is. Yeah. And it's like very obvious, like that's Chewbacca. This one, he's, he's brown except for like this weird... It looks like he ran into a ghost and the ghost just left like his spectral green and white ooze just like in an outline of his face. Yeah. The only reason that I could think that they did that was that they show him as a part of one of the stories of him coming back from vacation or getting ready to go on vacation. Right. And, and like I didn't know if he'd put. Yeah. Right. But I didn't know if he had put sunscreen on. But even in the, over top. In the, but it doesn't no, even it make even sense. In the past because it does, they had yeah, him it like, during the attack oh. run and stuff. He had just like this weird alop outline just around patches him, like, in terms of what was there yeah, like he decided really to strange. shave a little bit but i don't i don't stunk. know like it looked like stunk. i don't know if he was supposed to like <laughs> he was supposed to be just shiny like highlights it just looked really weird man look very uh, another thing that i had like just a minor gripe with in the original when luke makes his uh right before he makes his attack run han comes in with the millennium falcon spoilers for a 40 year old movie and uh and shoots the TIE fighters that are on either side of Vader, forcing Vader to spin out of the trench and go off into space. When it, when that happens, they cut to Han going, Yahoo! And he's like, it's all yours, kid, or whatever. That was great. Harrison Ford's delivery of that is like the most emotion he's ever shown in the, you know, 40 years since. <laughs> the I don't know if it was Trevor Duvall or who it was that played Han Solo in this, but he was just like, Wahoo, it's all yours, kid. Oh, I was boy. like, that's really kind of... If you can't get excited for that, then I don't know why you even do this job. Yeah, why did <laughs> you take this? Why did you take this gig, buddy? Yeah. And then my uh, major, my major gripe for the whole series: How do you feel about C three PO in general as a character, not just from the I, show, but like in general? I'm, I'm, I, I, I enjoy the C three PO character, uh, but at the same time, I, you know, he's he's a little bit of a whiny pain in the butt. He kind of sucks. Yeah. He sucks. He's a wet blanket. He He's like the one who's always trying to be the voice of reason, the voice of caution. But he also kind of sucks. Like, he doesn't want to do any of this stuff. And his entire framing story to this the group of droids at the, uh, the old cantina, which is now droid-friendly, for reasons we'll get into in a second. <laughs> the whole thing is about a cautionary tale about how you should not get involved in other people's troubles. And it's, it's sort of uh, tongue-in-cheek because R2 is always the troublemaker. He's always the one that's, like, pushing the story forward. Right. C-3PO is always trying to hold him back for his own, you know, good, for his own protection, his own reasons. But it's C-3PO giving the cautionary tale of, like, don't get involved because you'll just end up in this whole, like, galaxy-spanning empire war, whatever. It's like you're going to get into all these adventures and you don't want that kind of trouble. So I'm just kind of like, ah, you're just reminding me that you kind of suck as a character. Yeah. But yeah. I guess it's your show, so... But that was it. That was it for me. 
I, I think it's also challenging too because you know we watched the animated version of this many you know December's ago just mm. the the Star Wars droids tale and like I think we had a lot of the similar gripes with this yeah. is that it's fun to see a recap of this it's hard to see C3PO sort of be a wet blanket I don't think that both of them can really like they're titular characters we know and we love them but I just don't think that they can carry and shoulder the weight of one of these themselves they're very fun they're yep. very kid friendly but I, I just don't think in terms of being able to move forward with this, like it, it necessarily hits. Like the they, they're older, working an ensemble, right? They're working on exactly. Ensemble, not on you know, and I, I like your assessment of like it's it's supposed to be C three PO to be sort of a, a voice of reason or like the adult in the room that's like we can't do that, and it's just R two to just kind of like rush in yeah. head first and kind of mess stuff up or, yeah. or try to fix something. That's kind of fun, but it needs to be balanced out with you know the rest of the cast. And yeah, they, well, when R two's not even around for half of it because your story decided to be that a mysterious captor took him out of the picture, then yeah, all you're left with is a voice of reason and a wet blanket telling people not to do the same. So it's and, kind of kind of not fun. But I felt like you know every time you know C three PO is explaining to this, he's just kind of like he's humble bragging that like he knows some of these people as well. And so I think some of the message in terms of like don't get involved, but also if you do, you're going to meet these cool people. I'm like. Pick a side. And that's kind of the funny droid. thing is that like he's not very self-aware that he's been able to do all these amazing things and be part of all these crazy adventures that like people, you know, they're collecting cards about these people. They're so famous. And C-3PO is like, yeah, I know all of them, but I wish I had just stayed put and just stayed in my charging pod or whatever. So yeah. that's kind of funny to me. But at the same time, it just reminds me that C-3PO is not a super fun character. Yeah. No. I Sorry, agree. Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there was some funny stuff in here. There was. There was. Yeah. There was some funny stuff that was in here. Let's get into some of these LOLs. Dave, uh, what you kind of hinted at something about the cantina being droid friendly right now. What was the funny moment that was there? Because I love this as well. Well, you've got it as your number one here, so I'm going to let you take it because it's <laughs> it's a fun thing to show up after. Remember, this is after uh, episode six and well after episode one where we were introduced to this character who we get to see again. In a business sense, so yes. what's he up to? Yeah. Uh, so we've got a uh, Watto from from episode one. He is com- he has opened up a competing cantina across the street from cantina that is called Watto's Grotto. I uh, just I love the alliteration in this. It's always fun to see this, but he's outside flying around <laughs> with sort of neon lights and and, yeah. and like velvet ropes. It's like a club atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, it's fifty percent scummier and villainier. That and was I, great. That that was super fun. I, I don't know what there was about that. I mean, I think that that was probably over like halfway through the episode, and I was like, yeah. finally, something that made me laugh about this show. Exactly. Cool. I had a couple of quotes and like one-liners and stuff throughout the area, uh, throughout the episode that actually made me laugh. I don't know why, maybe I was delirious, but the one where um, in the beginning where they meet the ghost crew and yeah. C-3PO and R2-D2 kind of like happen aboard their ship. Uh, I forget who it was. It might've been Sabine or Hera. I think it was Hera that slapped restraining bolts on them. A, yeah. that's really funny in the Lego universe because it's just one of those little like nubs, one of those little like hole cappers. You just, you just pop on there. Yeah. And they just put them on it. And he's like, what is this bolt that's restraining me? And she's like, it's a restraining bolt. And I don't know what it was. That just made me laugh. Just the phrasing of it uh, was pretty good. And there's also like a lot of physical comedy. R2-D2 obviously doesn't speak so that we can understand him. But there's a lot of physical comedy with R2 and Chopper, which was really kind of interesting and funny to see. Because if you're not familiar with Chopper, he's a really like scrappy kind of like crazy droid from Rebels but you never really got to see those two interact before. And they do not get along at all <laughs> throughout the entire course of this particular story. They're fighting the entire time. And it was really fun to watch. You know, in Yoda Chronicles, we had yeah. two droids that were fighting one another. In in Droid Tales, we have two droids that are fighting one another. I mean, we went Underground watching droid it. fights. That's all yeah, I want. Yeah. That's what we're saying is that let's open up. We're accepting bids. Uh, add us online. We're going to be taking money for this, so we can't wait. You let yeah. us know who you think is going to win. It's going to be good times. <laughs> yeah. March can't Madness. Wait. <laughs> yeah, can't wait to battles. go to jail for this. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> uh, you know, the the physical comedy that you mentioned, you know, during that moment where you're introduced in A New Hope to Uncle Owen as well as also Luke, Yep. you have that moment where the Jawas are selling C-3PO and R2-D2, where C-3PO is purchased and, and you know, C-3PO believe in a new hope says like we come as a package deal eventually you know, like, yeah, yeah yeah eventually so it's funny to see the way that r2 kind of handles not being picked first where every other sort of smaller 
R2 or, or smaller droid Any unit. Any other astromech droid, yeah. Yeah, is getting selected, and you just see something, like, fly off screen and hit that. And every time it was that astro droid hitting, like, the ground and then the top of it, like, the Lego top, which is, again, super fun for the branding. Right. Like, the little Lego top pop off, and they're just like, oh, I guess that droid is broken right now. And they did that, I want to say, like five times. Oh, and, at and least. All five times, I was like, I'm enjoying every minute of this. Now, here's the thing, because here's a great example of how they can uh, add a tweak and make it funny, but then also yeah. maybe, depending on uh, subjectivity, take it a little too far. So, like, if they would have done it just once and added that tweak of, like, oh, the reason that droid exploded in the original movie is because R2 sabotaged it. Like, right. that's funny. That got a chuckle out of me. Then they did it a couple more times, and I was like, okay, that's funny. I get the bit. And then by the fifth time, I was like, all right, let's wrap it up and move on to the next thing. So it's one of those things where they like really stretched it out to like, right to my limit. And I was like, oh, okay, time to move on. Yeah. But it was it was good. It was a funny bit. Yeah. Uh, anything else that was an LOL for you? Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of, again, like some one-liners and just like funny physical comedy stuff. So like at one point um, when Luke is piloting the uh, speeder, he just runs right into <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi and just sends him flying. And again, because it's both Lego and Legends, you can do that stuff. Right. Um, there was also a really funny exchange with the two of them. So uh, <laughs> Luke is talking about R2, and he's like, R2's looking for somebody named uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And, and Ben throws his hood back, and he's like, well, that's me, Ben Kenobi. I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi. And he's like, wait, you're Obi-Wan? He's like, yeah, I changed my name to hide from the Empire. And Luke's like, but you didn't change your last name and then Obi-Wan just yells at me he's like you didn't change your last name and I just, <laughs> again like that's an argument that like fans have had for the last 40 years and I just love that it, it made its way into this show um cute little things like there's a mouse droid running around which right. you would know from the original thing and, and C-3PO is like oh a cute little mouse droid but then it's top pops up and it's got like an attack like Gatling laser <laughs> inside yeah. and just lights him up little stuff like that you had something to you no I just like the idea that we're just the funny things in here were a hit and run a dispute mm -hmm. between family members yeah. and then something that was cute and violent hey man it's a peek into my psyche so yeah. welcome to it <laughs> Uh, speaking of some more one-liners, so at one point C-3PO is yelling at R2-D2 about just like, as he does throughout the course of the series, just runs off and gets into more trouble. R2-D2 chirps back at him, and then C-3PO is like, Danger is not your middle name. Your middle name is Hyphen. And I don't know why, but again, that just cracked me up. Um, to think that a droid would have a middle name and that it's literally just like a character of its of its alphanumeric. Uh, th I don't know. Again, welcome to my brain where stuff like stupid stuff like that <laughs> makes me laugh. <laughs> uh, there was a really funny, again, dark comedic moment, which I don't think it was intentional. But when we're in the attack run trench and Obi-Wan's voice is heard and he tells Luke to use the force. Luke, you know, puts away his targeting computer, closes his eyes, and then you see his X-Wing just, like, spin around and start shooting at Big's X-Wing, which is right behind him. And Big's like, dude, <laughs> what are you doing? Obi-Wan's like, Luke, maybe you want to keep your eyes open while you use the Force. Luke's like, oh, okay. He turns back around to continue his attack run, but because he distracted Biggs, Biggs immediately gets shot by other TIE fighters behind him and blows up. So, in my mind, it's like... Did Luke inadvertently kill his best friend and wingman? Because that's pretty much what this series makes it look like just happened. Legends. 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 And then the last thing that made me laugh, um, canonically in uh, Return of the Jedi, or in, in New Hope, sorry. Right. The very at end. The, yep. At the, the medal ceremony, Chewbacca never got a medal. Now, they fixed this in canon with, I think, a comic book explaining what happened. I don't remember exactly what it was. But in Legends, in this story... C-3PO has all three medals for Luke, Han, and Chewie, but he, like, trips in his excitement over seeing R2 again and breaks pretty much all of them, but especially Chewie's. Um, so Chewie no longer gets his medal, which I thought was kind of cute. Yeah. That's about kind it. Of, kind of a fun way to pull that back in, especially, you know, if you, if you are a big Star Wars fan and you know what's happening, you're just right. kind of like, okay, that's an interesting, satisfying take on it. Yeah, and that's, that's where we talk about the strengths of, like, the Lego brand and the Star Wars brand. They know their stuff, and they have fun with it, and because it's Legends, it's not too serious. So when, when they do stuff like that, it's a lot of fun. I have two final things okay. that were LOLs, which one was more of a revelation for me because I needed to go back and actually watch the scene again, and the other one was something that I hinted at previously, which is just the Lego system. The first was, you know, we made reference to Han calling C-3PO Professor on Yoda Chronicles. Guess right. what? I'm a goofball. I didn't realize that Han 
uh, in Empire Strikes Back has a line where he says, take the professor back and plug him into the hyperdrive. Right. So that's 100% on brand with what Han would say uh, at that time. It we just, still don't know if he called him Goldie anywhere else in, in canon, though. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm still, I need to hunt for that one. Yeah. But it's also still confusing because he calls him Professor in this version, which is a recap of New Hope. Right. So, I, you know, there was timeline stuff. But guess what? Legends. Legends. The, the final thing for me is that Luke has this one throwaway line where he just says, I'm the same size as everything or as everyone else in our universe. Well, back that up a little bit. Right. So it's when right. he goes to rescue Leia. And, right. and canonically, Leia is like, aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? And she says the same thing to him in this Lego version, to which he replies, I'm the same size as everyone else in our universe, right. which is perfect in terms of the Lego system in making sure that all of the minifigures uh, are the same size as everybody else. So everyone's the same height, but it's fun to kind of see that type of a, a height joke for both brands that they were able to say, hey, we've got something that's strong in Star Wars and something that's strong in Lego. We can utilize both of these brands and kind of put them together. Yeah. That was a satisfying joke for me. I Super smart. That. Yeah, yeah, very, very smart. So I think that that's it for our good, our bad, and our LOL. I think so. Yeah. So now we are at the point where we can give our recommendation. So if you're a first-time or a long-time listener, the way that we're going to do this is we can make a recommendation and say that we recommend that you take the time to go and watch this. We can also say we don't recommend this and we can give you a justification why you can spend your time better elsewhere. And then finally, if we don't recommend something, we can go one step further and we can put our cartoon in the dip, which is, yes, the dip from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which erases this cartoon from the annals of cartoon history. And we'll no longer talk about it on this podcast unless it's in a negative fashion. Such such illustrious superstars of this are the cartoon for Ace Ventura Pet Detective, which (laughs) R.I.P., yeah, you know? never existed. Because it's been dipped. It's what are you never, talking about? I've never, it's never heard of existed. It. Yeah. yeah, I wish they would have made a good version of a cartoon with Jim Carrey, but actually use Jim Carrey. Mm. Oh man! All right, so Dave, we're now at our portion. So for for uh, Lego Star Wars Droid Tail, I'm sorry. For Lego Star Wars colon Droid Tail. <laughs> Awful. How are you feeling about it? I'm not gonna dip it. Okay. I'm actually. Oof, this is lukewarm, Luke Skywalker warm, but I'm gonna give it a soft recommendation with with uh, a caveat. So unlike the Yoda Chronicles, Droid Tales was actually droids tales. It was actually stories about the droids from their perspective that dipped in and out of Star Wars um, stories that you know and love, and it gave you their point of view on it. And I kind of like that. So if you're looking for a slightly different skew on the story told from the droids perspective, with a lot of humor and a lot of like little Easter eggs and and nods and stuff thrown in. If you don't think about it too much, this is actually a pretty fun, uh, pretty fun little series. It's only five episodes, a total of like what, 160 minutes. So I think at at that price point, like it's a recommend. Yeah. How about you though? Okay. I, I am not going to recommend this. Okay. And you know, I know that we're obviously we're making this, this reaction or I'm I'm giving my opinion based on the one episode that we watched. Sure. Uh, I, I will say this. You know, if I wanted to watch Star Wars Rebels, then I would go and I'd watch Star Wars Rebels. Sure. If I wanted to watch A New Hope, I would have watched A New Hope. I don't feel like this offered anything new or interesting or super fun, uh, other than the couple LOL moments that we had that are up there. You know, as always, it's nice to see the two brands being Star Wars and Legos kind of working very well together. And in some cases, there were some real strong moments that we've talked about, but there were also way more misses in this for me than than I saw in Yoda Chronicles. And I, it just made me feel that if I was going to go back and watch a recap of a beloved classic movie like A New Hope, I should just go watch that instead of seeing the Star Wars version. Or guess what? Maybe I just go back and watch the robot chicken version of it. Still probably really funny and really good. A little the bit family more. guy version of it, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that there's a lot of other opportunity that I would have had to go back and see this same story rehashed to me again for the 11th millionth time. I, it just didn't hit for me with this. So I definitely think that you can spend your time better elsewhere. Maybe check out Yoda Chronicles. Maybe just sit down and watch Star Wars Rebels. If Dave's saying it's yeah. 160 minutes, go watch a couple episodes of Rebels. It's a, It's a good show. <laughs> it's a good show. It's a good show. And they're all available on Disney Plus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. And we're not getting paid by Disney. So nope. guess what? No Disney dollars went no into Disney the dollars. opinions of 
this recommendation <laughs> or disrecommendation. Give it that uh, Disney dip. Yeah, give it that. Oh, man. Someday. Here we go. Someday. We'll rebrand it. If Disney wants to pay us to rebrand our dip, <laughs> we'll give Disney, it the Disney, Disney dip. dip. Mm-hmm. I'm in. I'm on board. Oh, man. All right. Well, that is it for us. We want to give a big thanks to our friend of the show, Bobby Anthem. You heard him on this episode. You can also hear him on his paranormal podcast, Inhuman Experience, with his co-host, Bobby Blades. You can find them on Twitter at IEXP underscore podcast. And Bobby has a solo show that goes in the same stream as Inhuman Experience. That show is also called In Search of My Lost Soul. Right now, I think there's nine episodes of it. It's available uh, anywhere that you download podcasts and give them a listen. Uh, I highly recommend In Search of My Lost Soul. I'm caught up. I love the show itself. Hey, Dave. What do you got going on, buddy? Same old stuff, buds. Uh, you can find me over at Collider.com. Check me out on Twitter at Dr. Claw MD. And if you still haven't picked up a holiday gift for you and yours, you're running out of time, so you better do it soon. Are you going to get cold? You can pick up The Science of Breaking Bad, my new book from MIT Press. How about you, bud? What's going on? Oh, man. As always, I do live improv comedy in Washington, D.C. with a group that's called Knox. That's N-O-X exclamation point. You can find tickets and times with DC.org. And I'm always on Twitter and Instagrams. Don't want to be on Twitter or Instagrams. Always. Help me get off Twitter and Instagrams. Just message me at Sean Paul Ellis. <laughs> Very Just message easy. him. Get off. Just get, get off. off. That's all. <laughs> Just get off. A Dude, new that... movie from Jordan Peele. <laughs> get off. That sounds actually way hornier and way more adult than After I probably dark. want messages to be. Yeah. Anyway, want to support us? Want to support Saturday Morning Cartoons? Yeah, the show you just listened to. Tell a friend, review us on Apple iTunes. We have no idea if it helps. In fact, we don't even care. So <laughs> it sounds like what everybody else says. So they're just reading this copy. Anyway, review us. Who cares? You can always slide into our DMs on Twitter at Morning Tunes. Remember, that's morning with a U. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Saturday Morning Cartoons. Drop us an old fashioned email, Saturday Morning Cartoons at gmail.com. You can find all of the links to everything that I just mentioned, as well as also a place to recommend cartoons to us and check out all the cartoons that we've watched in the link tree, which is the weirdo link that is in all of our social media bio sites. You can just click there and it gives you a a menu of all the buttons and it brings you to all the places. It makes it super simple for you. And as always, you can listen to us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, anywhere the fine podcasts are sold or given away for free. So thank you so much for listening to Droid's Tale, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Now get off. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot for listening to Saturday Morning Cartoons. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to transform and roll out. <laughs>